written believers and saints of God. Please listen to me and give me time. I am listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit in my heart. Then I communicate. In a normal day, you will not see me talk like this. I am a very shy person and even less educated than you think. But when I am led by the Spirit to speak, I make sure I take my time to listen to the voice of the Spirit in me before I communicate. I will not say what has not been given, and I will not say what I have not understood. I will only communicate what it says I should say. Jesus came to this world for a purpose. He left for a purpose. And the reason why he is coming back is for a purpose. When we open our Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 42 to 44, Jesus told us his assignment here on earth was to preach the good news of the kingdom for that is why he was sent and when we look in Matthew chapter 4 after the 40 days fasting and the try moment in the days and the wilderness when he came out he said the kingdom of heaven has drawn near to you repent repent and when he talks about this repentance he was talking about a change of mind a change of reasoning that is why when we repent when we come born again we put we put away our old self and take away the new self which is renewable in knowledge of him Lord Jesus Christ we have the mindset of Christ because we are made Christian because of him that is why he instructed his disciples to go and preach this gospel of the kingdom in Matthew chapter 10 yeah if it's 7 verse 10 or it's 10 verse 7 he instructed his disciples to preach this gospel of the kingdom and he gave us one greatest assurance in Matthew 13, he told us that the even one came and saw her when men were asleep. And the reason why he did not uproot the tar is because he allowed them to grow together with the crops. So that on the day of the harvest, this tar will be tied up and will be burned. And that is the end time. He was speaking in parables. And if you notice, where Jesus wanted to pass an important message. He never spoke in a plain language. He spoke in parables, in a language where truth is hidden. So when the listeners are willing to take, they do research, they find out, and it is revealed. That is why he said, if you look for me, if you search for me deeply, in your heart then you will find me he promised us that before the end will come this gospel that has been corrupted this gospel that has been replaced will surface and it will be preached into all the nations for a witness a testimony for you and I we will not deny that it was preached the truth of the gospel Jesus had one school of thought if that school of thought was to be revealed it was all about the kingdom nothing more and nothing less he said the kingdom of God is like is like is like people of God I don't want to use much of your time I said and I repeat all the righteous men and the prophets of old right up to John were based on prophecies they prophesied 
what will happen, what will come right up to the joy. They never saw Jesus, the works of Jesus. Only John saw him. But he didn't live longer to experience this life that we have gotten in him. That is why Jesus himself told us. For men that were born of man and woman, no one has ever been born. But the list of you, my followers, is greater than him in the kingdom because we have gotten the privilege to see him, to hear him, to go through his teaching ministry and to have him in us. I will not go too far. People of God, all the people of the Old, the Old Testament in the Bible are just to encourage us to, de- to, to let us know how the people of God live a life that will pleasant to God, to boost our faith, to make us hold on to God's word because His word is yes and amen. I'm not saying that the works of God in the Old Testament are less important. They are important. But we have a new mandate in Christ Jesus. And that is why he gave us a law. Today we say we live by grace, not by law. Listen, no kingdom functions without law. Even in our churches, some, are, some have laws. We have rules and regulation. And you think it's the kingdom of God that functions without law? There is law. God in human flesh, Jesus, did not abolish the law of God. He abolished the laws of men. That is why just strictly won the four five ministry. He said, if any of you break any of this law by teaching them not to obey, you will be the least in the kingdom. Why did he hold on to the law? And he said, if you want to be one of my disciples, you will obey my word. You will keep my commandment. Is that not a law? Grace is just to enable you and I to overcome the law. To be able to go through the law so that we can't be victim of the law. And Apostle Paul wrote it. He gave us how that grace works through fruits of the Spirit. Because the fruits of the Spirit overcomes law. There is no way the law can hold love, can hold self control. People of God, there is a dark cloud which is surfacing. Because it is written that we should not judge. It doesn't mean that we cannot give warnings. It was written that in the latter days, people will turn away from sound doctrine. They will embrace the doctrine that is that gratify the flesh. We can clearly see today, it is no more about the kingdom. It is about self. It is about prosperity. It is about prophecies. What about the kingdom? What about the assignment that was given by our Lord Jesus Christ on the last day before he left? He said, teach them to obey this word. This work I have taught you. And before I will be with you to the very end. Is this about Jesus? I am not here for you to agree with me. I am here for you to search deep in your heart. Is this really what I was called for? Is this really what I saw the apostles of old did and and lived the life? Is this what Jesus demonstrated with his life pattern on earth? He said, follow me. Are we doing what he said we should do? Or we are after the works of the people of old? It's just a question. It's left for you to answer. The spirit in us testify that we are sons of God. The flesh counts for nothing. 